Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue deck I like to call Flash Fish, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And we're calling it that since we're playing the full playset of Wavebreak Hippocamp, the new edition from Theros Beyond Death, 3 mana for a 2-2 enchantment creature, Horsefish, saying whenever we cast our first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card, and our deck is filled with flash creatures and instants that we can play in the opponent's turn to keep fueling the Hippocamp, so it turns into a nice card draw engine. So let's take a look at our entire deck. At 1 mana we also have the full playset of Terramander as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer. Can also adapt 4 for 8 mana but costs 1 generic mana less to activate for each instant and sorcery in our graveyard. So in the late game we can potentially activate this for very little and turn this into a nice 5-5 five, five flyer which can definitely close out the game very quickly. We also have two copies of Spectral Sailor as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flash flyer that for 4 mana can draw a card. And we're only playing two copies of Spectral Sailor instead of the full playset because of course now we have a Wavebreak Hippocamp as another card draw engine so the ability on Sailor is less important. Then we also have the full playset of Opt, 1 mana for an instant to scry 1 and draw a card so perfect to play alongside Hippocamp on turn 4 perhaps. Then we also have the full playset of Unsummon as a nice 1 mana instant to return target creature to its owner's hand plays very nicely alongside Hippocamp on turn 4, can also use Unsummon to save the Hippocamp from removal, so very versatile card, and uh, we do need some interaction for creatures that resolved that we weren't able to counter, so Unsummon does a good job there. Then at 2 mana we've got our full place of Brineborn Cutthroat, another win condition, 2 mana for a 2-1 flash creature that says whenever we cast a spell during an opponent's turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Cutthroat. So unlike the Hippocamp, which is limited to drawing one card in the opponent's turn, the Cutthroat can potentially accumulate more than one plus one plus one counter if we play multiple spells at instant speed in the opponent's turn. Then we also have two copies of Negate as our first counter spell to counter target a non-creature spell. It's a bit conditional, so we're only playing two copies. And then two copies of Quench, which is not great, but pretty decent in the early turns to counter any spell unless this controller pays two, so it can counter both non-creature spells and creature spells. And then we have the full playset of Essence Capture to counter target creature spell and put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature we control. And important to keep in mind is that if we do put a plus one plus one counter on Terramander, we will no longer be able to adapt it since you can only adapt creatures without plus one plus one counters on them. So sometimes if Terramander is the only creature, it is correct not to put a plus one plus one counter on it, but it is a may ability since it says up to one, so we don't have to do it. Then at 3 mana we've got our full playset of Wavebreak Hippocamp, and then another very important card in the deck is Brazen Borber, which both modes are very useful. First we can Petty Theft at instant speed to return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand, and then later we also get the 3-1 Flash Flyer that can only block creatures with flying, so we get basically two instants to potentially leverage the Hippocamp to draw extra cards with enable the cutthroat and of course interact, as well as present a win condition, so Brazen Borrower kind of does it all. And then finally we also have the full playset of Sinister Sabotage, as kind of a catch-all counterspell to counter anything, and Surveil 1, which gives us a bit of additional card selection. And then our mana base, only 22 lands since our curve is relatively low, and we also have 4 opts as additional ways to find lands if we need them. So we've got 20 islands and then 2 Mystic Sanctuary, which can also help us put an extra counterspell or uh, interactive spell back on top of our deck, so in the late game it can be better than an island. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and seems reasonable. Could definitely benefit from a Hippocamp to draw some more cards, but we've got Sailor as another engine. If I get the chance to trade Sailor for Pelt Collector, I'll probably take it. Innkeeper can counter that one. Yeah, Innkeeper is definitely a problem for a counterspell heavy deck since it's a cheap way to draw extra cards. And uh, it's also on cast, so even if we counter the adventure, they still get to draw a card. So if I get the chance, I might uh, unsummon the Innkeeper and try and counter it on the way back. But being one mana also makes it easier for them to play it alongside something else. Which is another way of beating counterspells. 
So they're on the green-white adventure deck. I'll happily trade Cutthroat for Innkeeper if they offer. And a Lovestruck Beast Adventure, that's fine. Alright, so they don't have a ton of pressure in play. I can counter the Lovestruck Beast if they play it and look for something like Hippocamp to pull us ahead with these cheap instants. Another Innkeeper, yeah, gotta counter that too. And yeah, perfect, there's a Hippocamp. So we've got a chance. And I'm probably gonna end up unsummoning the beast here, but I could also opt, we'll see. Conclave Tribunal. So I can unsummon my own Hippocamp. But then we're taking seven, but maybe that's still the way to go. Or I can just opt and then we'll get to draw a card. But then I might not have another Hippocamp. Could also go Hippocamp and then Sailor to Chump Beast and uh, draw a card. Sanctuary can put Unsummon or Sabotage back on top, which is also pretty appealing. I guess I'm leaning Unsummon just to buy ourselves more time. And if they have another Tribunal, I can negate it this time. Beast attacks. I guess I'm taking five then. Don't want to go too low since they can go wide with castle. But uh, if we can keep Sailor in play, we can potentially draw even more cards. And then I'll keep my instance to leverage Hippocamp some more. Could attack with Sailor, but I might still end up jumping with it, who knows. The one damage not super relevant. We're gonna tap the Hippocamp, makes sense. But then they couldn't make a token. So Brazen Borrower to Bounce Beasts, and then uh, play it. Could also be our line here. Although if I unsummon, then I can still activate Spectral Sailor, which is also appealing. Although Borrower to eventually start killing them is also pretty decent, so I've got a lot of options. I think I'm just gonna Brazen Borrower Bounce. Draw cards. Can maybe draw into a Counterspell. And now I'm okay just playing the Borrower, of course. Plenty of instants to enable the Hippocamp. Alright, so now if I negate it, then uh, their Beast is gone forever, so I guess that's fine. So negate countering a creature in a convoluted way. Could still decide to opt and aggressively look for another Counterspell, but hello there. Gotta love another Hippocamp. So now we're really doing it. I guess Sailor can attack now. Even if they tap down one Hippocamp, we'll have another one to block with.
And if my opponent plays like a must counter card, I could potentially still opt and draw into an essence capture, for instance. It's gonna be a Loxodon. Yeah, if I can opt into an essence capture, I think I would counter it. Not a Brazen Borrower is not bad. So that can also manage the tokens, so I guess we'll keep it. And then just play Cutthroat end of turn. Terramander can also become quite large here, so a great way to block a 4-4. Although they could have more giant killers to kill the Terramander, I guess. So a Sailor can attack. We'll play a Terramander and then keep up our instance. To best play around another giant killer if we do want to adapt Terramander is to block first and then adapt, so that if they do have the giant killer at least we blocked one of their creatures. It's gonna be formation. Yeah, it's pretty good. I guess we'll start by bouncing a token and see what we can find. Negates, I guess it works too. And then I could still adapt Terramander. So they might not have a good attack unless they have another giant killer or they want to tap down Terramander. But then Cutthroat can also potentially block. So yeah, once we're in this stage of the game with double Hippocamp in play, we're uh, usually doing pretty well. No attacks. So I'll just play the Brazen Borrow, I think. Can adapt our mana later. And another giant killer would also kill Cutthroats. So Sailor and Borrower can attack. I'll probably still keep Terramander on defense for one turn cycle. Although the opponent's gonna tap it down for us. Sure. And then they can tap down Cutthroats in their turn to maybe get an attack in, but we've got double Brazen Borrowers, so we're fine. So we could potentially kill them next turn. Depends how aggressive we want to be. Shepherds, sure. And Guide Mother to give Loxodon flying, we can Bounce, and then if they want to convoke Loxodon, that's fine by me. And this way we fizzle the Guide Mother, so they don't get uh, the creature half. And yeah, that'll do it. Sweet. So, kind of a rough start with the Innkeeper. But uh, yeah, Hippocamp definitely drew us a lot of action, and then we were able to take over. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands. Cutthroat as a threat, couple of summons to tempo them out and then some counter spells. If they kill the Cutthroat, then this hand's not great, but of course we've got plenty of threats to draw into as well. All right, turn one, knight. Yeah, let's uh, bounce that. Knight of Heaven Legion very good against counterspell decks because it's a one mana threat that can win the game by itself. 
If they replay it, they'll probably SS capture it before playing Cutthroats. Miss out on a counter, but that's fine. Fervent Champion is a bit more manageable. It's their opponent on Rakdos Knights. Sadly, no counter spells available now. Croxa. Yeah, it's pretty effective. Uh, so I guess we'll just play the Cutthroat then. And then... Thinking of discarding on Summon. Negate could be a dead card, but they usually have, like, an Ember Cleave at least. And then Brazen Borrower's kind of like a better unsummon. Alright, so now we've got the shields up. We are currently winning this race. Take one. A register all counter. Could let it resolve and then bounce it since it's a pretty big mana investment for the opponents. It's definitely reasonable too. Although I'll end up countering it at some point. And this is more mana efficient. Don't think I want to keep land on top, even though it lets me bounce plus negate. Since we're likely to draw more lands anyway. Crusader, sure. Another champion. So if I bounce a champion, they can't replay it. And I'm kind of happy drawing more cards with Crusader in play, I think. Although that is a bit of a double-edged sword. Essence Capture should be good. I'll capture the champion, since it represents quite a bit of damage. And then still not enough cards in Graveyard for Croxa, which is important. If the Ember Cleave I can negate. And then this Crusader is just going to kill them. Bam! Sweet! So beat Rakdos Knights, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands reasonable, bit heavy on the threes. But we're on the draw, so hopefully we'll draw another land. And quench in the early turns is usually pretty effective. Charming Prince, alright, so some sort of enter the battlefield uh, type deck. Quench also important to counter to fairies, especially when on the draw. Peak of the Devil. So now we've got our shields up. Not gonna tap out for Hippocamp, but if we find some cheap instant to play alongside it, then I'm definitely open to the idea. So even though it's three mana, it's not often a turn three play.
Deputy is fine. I can just bounce it with the Brazen Borrower. Unsummon, so now if we find another lands, Hippocamp plus Unsummon is pretty appealing. Night of Autumn... I guess is fine. Are they just gonna play another Charming Prince here? They could make this a 4-3, which I guess hits pretty hard. But I can bounce it for pretty cheap. Yeah, I guess we'll sabotage it. And look for land 4 here with the Surveil. Cutthroat can also be decent, but I think I'd prefer land here. Alright, it's gonna be a Paradise Druid instead. Alright, so now I could go Hippocamp plus Unsummon. Or I can still keep up Sabotage, since I do still have one unknown in hand. If that unknown is, let's say, Teferi, could be bad. But, uh, nah, I think I'm down. Play Hippocamp. And then probably keep Terramander back. I'm not super close to adapting it. And maybe I'm better off just trading for Paradise Druids. And then Deputy, I can just bounce. Could bounce my own Hippocamp, so we kind of get rid of Deputy forever. But for now this seems fine, and then if they... Interesting, portal their Deputy to flicker it, that's okay. So now I'm probably just taking 4 since Terramander can next turn potentially turn into a 5-5, five five, which is a good blocker. And then we'll just pass. Now, let's see, how is this worded? Yes, yeah, so if I bounce the Deputy in the opponent's turn and then cast another instant, I'm not going to draw cards since I've already cast an instant. So we'd have to Brazen Borrow bounce this in, the, in my turn and then... That way we potentially get to draw cards. Um, so I could do that. And then Essence Capture the Deputy. I guess that's fine. This Deputy is just getting... ...bounced around everywhere. And then I can put a counter on the Hippocamp so it can block their two-powered creatures. Charming Prince is fine. And then they're gonna attack first, which plays around Essence Capture. I'll take it. And Thassa still counts as a creature. So, yeah, we'll capture it. And now we can pretty cheaply adapt Terramander if we wanted to. Four mana, I guess, doesn't keep up Sabotage. So we'll just wait for now. Could attack for one, we'll play it safe. And now Deputy, we can Sabotage. I'll play Cutthroat first so it picks up a counter. And yeah, that pretty much wraps this game up. Double Brazen Borrower to draw more cards with Hippocamp. Terra Manor becomes a 5-5 and uh, starts killing them. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, a reasonable enough hand. Probably gotta opt to hit our land drop here. And then... Uh, Good against creature decks with double essence capture. That resolves.
Borrow is okay, but we already have one, and I would rather hit my land drops. I'll take two. Keep up uh, essence capture, and then run out cutthroat if we don't have to counter anything. They could have a murder strider to kill this, but it's probably still fine. It's gonna be a drag to the underworld instead. Interesting, alright. Sailor could trade for Swordmaster. And then we still have Essence Capture up for creatures, which is kind of what I'm expecting them to play here. So this Castle Lockthwain could definitely turn out to be an issue. So we will need to find our own card engine, like uh, Hippocamp. I guess I'm just gonna bounce this Paragon before it hits me, since we can uh, essence capture it on the way down. Spawn of Mayhem, I'll happily counter. Alright, so we're kind of keeping parity here, but the castle's kind of the biggest issue at the moment. Yeah, if they want to resolve their Paragon, I guess it's fine. Nice, this is kind of the perfect spot to draw Hippocamp with the mana to cast Sabotage. Can block the Paragon, so might as well attack. And if they kill this, I'm happy. Alright, so... Can play Hippocamp, maybe Sabotage the creature half of Murder Strider. And start to pull ahead. Another sabotage at the ready. And yeah, I'll take another one, I think. We will eventually need to answer the Paragon, but... For now this seems fine, and since I'm not blocking, I might as well attack for two. Put a bit of pressure on them, given their castle. Terramander, nice win condition here, perfect. And the negate can be bad. Double castle. So this is where we turn the corner. Multiple ways to protect Terramander. So I'm probably going to take one more hit, since I don't want to tap out to adapt Terramander. Unsummon, good insurance. And Sanctuary can put another counterspell back on top. And I guess we can negate that. Or I can let it resolve, since we're winning with our Flyer anyway. Sure. And then keep negate to protect the Terramander, basically, which is a three turn clock. Yep, 
And then I can still adapt end of turn two. And then Sanctuary get back Sabotage. And if we cast any instant in the opponent's turn, like this unsummon, we can draw the Sabotage. Shepard, I'll unsummon. And then I can counter it on the way back, I suppose. I'll take four. in for seven. If they have another Paragon, I can sabotage it if I want, or I can just let the trade happen at this point since the game's pretty much decided. And now they can't really activate their castle anymore with two cards in hand. Sailor can go in front of Paragon. Sabotage hits Shepard, so they'll need something pretty special here. Alright, Grey Merchants, fair enough. So they're still in it. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just hit for 5 and then play another Terramander. Did not necessarily expect them to have Grey Merchant, they seem more like a Knight Synergy deck. Can adapt for single mana. But we've got Essence Capture for another Grey Merchant. I guess this doesn't hurt. Can counter non-creature spells, can counter creature spells. So we've got all the bases covered. Sweet. So yeah, pretty interesting game here against Mono Black Knights. Our poor opponent got counterspelled out of existence. Feel kind of bad. But uh, yeah, this Mono Blue Flash Fish deck is pretty effective, and the addition of Hippocamp definitely makes it a lot more powerful than it was before, where you kind of had to go into green for cards like the Night Pack Ambusher to give it a bit more oomph. So now Mono Blue is uh, potentially viable again. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.